Hi guys, and welcome to the first video in a series of summer cane trials. For those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that I hauled a lot of cane and that my goal this summer is to try several different types of cane and give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek onto my read desk to tell you what I've been experiencing with the different types of cane. The first type of cane I'm going to be taking you through is the Madeir style of cane. Now I chose to go after the Madeir first because there are so many of you that are following me on Instagram and I'm following you back just so I can get a sneak peek at your read desk. And you're trying the Madeira cane, and many of you are liking it. So this is a cane that I was not as familiar with as I'd like to be. So I wanted to try several different types of it and make enough reads that I could really get a grasp of what I think of this style of cane. So the Madeira cane. I ordered two separate types. I ordered the gouge shaped and profiled, and I also ordered just the gouged. I ordered both of these so that I get an idea of what shape they're using and what their profile is set on and what they're mass marketing, but also just some gouge so that I could take it through my own system and then compare it to what I normally do to get a good foothold into, do I like it? Do I not like it? What's great about it? Okay, so let me take you through my experiences with the Madeir gouge shaped and profiled. I bought this from RDG and it retailed for about $4.15 per piece plus the cost of shipping. My first thing that I noticed with this cane is that it has a very clearly defined collar. For those of you who have a tube that is about 30 millimeters, you're not going to need to do any adjusting. I, you're, you're not even going to have to put in a collar. It is set and ready to go for you. For myself, I like a shorter tube on a reed to give it a darker sound, so I did have to adjust it and move it back a little bit, but no worries, it's just a small fix. The shape of the overall gouge shaped and profiled cane fits nicely with a Rieger 1A. This is one of my favorite shapes. And for those of you who aren't aware, the Rieger 1A is very similar to a Fox 2. So, you know, that'll give you a little bit of an idea about the overall shape of the cane. The next thing I noticed about the RDG Madeir gouge shaped and profiled cane is that it doesn't have a clearly defined spine. It has an overall thickness, but it doesn't have a spine that is heavier with channels on either side. Instead, it just has an overall thickness. It does have the ears and the lighter bit at the very tip, but it's still going to need a bit of work. For me, at this point, I decided to dig in and make some reads. Now, as I was going to check the profile, I didn't want to check the profile of just one read because it didn't feel like that would give me real results. So instead, I made three blanks and then checked the micrometer dimensions of all three. Now, for me, I'm dealing with a overall read length of 55. And at 55 of the overall read length, I was so excited to see where the profile was at because the heart, which is the most important measurement for me, came in at 70 to 75. Now, for those of you who haven't been following me for a while, the heart is the most important to me because it gives me a intonation, a tone color, and a stability to the read. So that micrometric dimension is one of the most important dimensions when I have a finished read ever. So the fact that this came in with a heart that was, you know, it had a little bit of leeway on it so that I could remove some fibers, um, do a little bit of sanding to get uh, pithy fibers out if I'd like to, if I wanted to do a bit of hand gouging, that was also applicable. Um, I had options available to me. For those of you who maybe play on a longer style of read, um, I did check it with the micrometric dimensions all the way if let's say you play on an overall read that the length is 58 and it is still thick enough. You're going to be a-okay to get that heart measurement in. So you know, this was one of the better canes that I tried because it had a good shape that I liked. It also had a thickness of the heart and a good profile on it. Um, so at this point, I was so excited to go ahead and dig into just the gouged cane and start processing it on my own system. Now, the gouged cane is going to be less expensive than the gouge shaped and profiled because the uh, company has done less work. So, just the gouge cane ran $2.15 per piece um, plus the cost of shipping. When I dug into the gouged cane, that's when I really started to notice consistencies that I was seeing in the reeds. Okay, the cane overall is very fibrous. Um, 
the cane feels like it has on this outer level, a level that looks like, I would have to say like a castle wall. You know how it goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. Um, that outer level is very fibrous. Um, this was easily removed with just a bit of sanding, could take a lot of those fibers down. And this is a type of cane that you end up wanting to take a lot of cane off. Um, these are some of the lightest reeds that I've ever played on because the cane is so hard. I'm going to even venture into saying that at times the cane was too hard. My reasons for saying this are that I had experiences with a lot of cracking in the tube. Um, sometimes it would go into the blades, other times it would not go into the blades. Um, my ability to try to disperse that crack through the cross hatch, for those of you who have watched the Make a Blank With Me video, um, you know that I do two types of scoring, both the cross hatch as well as the cut through scoring. And that oftentimes, if I do have a crack, it will disperse a crack. Sometimes it was unable to disperse that crack. Another way I know that this is really hard cane is that when I tried to do the cross hatch, at times the cross hatch allowed the outer shell of the cane to just shred off. Um, I have not ever experienced just shredding, um, just chunks of the cane disappearing, um, but it shows how hard that outer shell is. The other bit that I noted of it being extremely hard was that um, when I went to clip the tip, usually on the first day of playing on Donzi or Rigotti cane, I can go ahead, clip the tip, um, put a collar in the back, put a tip profile on it, and I'm going to go to start breaking it in. This was not the case. Um, I had to actually take the reed down and start sanding it with a file immediately um, in order to just get it to start to vibrate. Um, and that's after the tip profile and after putting the collar in, I then had to add channels to it. I did a second round of diamond triangles at the front of it um, in order to just get it vibrating. So usually the scraping that I would do on day two, day three, maybe even day four, I did on day one just to get the reed vibrating because the cane was so hard. Interestingly enough, I also had reeds that after I played on them for two or three days that would crack directly down the center after I would play on them. Um, you know, I, I found this because there was a reed that wasn't vibrating the way I wanted it to. I stuck it in again to soak and then I stuck the plaque in it and then sure enough, there was a crack directly down the center. The only other time I have had anything like this happen was when it's really hard cane. And it hasn't happened to me since um, Donzi cane that I used 15 years ago um, that this, this happened to me. but that's the only other time that this has happened in my reed making. So immediately I was like, oh, this is, this is hard cane. The other bit that I noticed was that I was able to get reeds to pop. Now I like to check the seal of the reed um, at the base of it, but interestingly enough, I was able to um, just hold the reed, pinch it at the center and release, and it would seal on its own, creating a popping sound. Okay, now I'm a firm believer that all cane has a place and that it has a style of performance that it is directly looking for. So for this type of cane, I would not write it off. I think it's a fantastic use for uh, playing where you have a lot of projection that you need to do or French music. Both of these would be superb, largely because the high notes of the French music, you want a good, hard read in order to pop those out. Um, I'm thinking, you know, Stravinsky, Ravel, maybe even some Tonsman. I would definitely go after some Madeira Cane for that. Okay, maybe you've already been working with Madeira Cane, or maybe you're interested in working with Madeira Cane. Here are some suggestions I have for this style of cane. The first thing is don't fight it. It is hard cane. Be prepared that this cane is going to give you a brighter sound, but that it's also going to have some of the flat harmonics in it because it is just so absolutely hard. Be prepared to scrape this thin. And I mean thinner than I have ever gone on a reed before. I kept the heart measurement still so that it was heavy enough to give it that dimension of sound, but the tip and the back, I went extremely light.
On this style of cane, I would be very careful about hand gouging. I do a minimal bit just to smooth the inside of the cane, but I would not do it with a scraper wheel. I would stick to some very light sandpaper and not do very much of it because uh, hand gouging has a tendency to make the cane harder, and this cane is already so hard, it doesn't need any strengthening. So um, I would not do very much hand gouging. And finally, I would use a short bevel. By short bevel, I mean the type of beveling I did in my Make a Read With Me video, beveling just from the second wire to the base of the tube. Um, a short bevel is going to help with increasing the low note response and giving those lows in the sound a warmer, richer sound. A longer bevel from the first wire to the end of the tube is going to help with the high notes. This cane is already so hard, it does not need any help with the highs. So stick to a short bevel on this style of cane. I do have to say that I have purchased another type of Madeir cane, this time from Midwest Musical Imports. One of my subscribers out there, hi Sam, um, he was asking me about some of the cane that I was trying and when I mentioned Madeir, he said, oh, but it has such an odd shape. And he said that the cane from Midwest Musical Imports possibly differed from that of RDG. And when I looked on the Midwest Musical Imports site, they noted that the cane had a goblet shape. Now, I don't think of the Rieger 1A or the Fox 2 as a goblet shape, so I went ahead and ordered some of the cane from there. Okay guys, I hope that you found this informative. Maybe you are looking at trying this style of cane and I've given you some ideas, some suggestions that you hadn't thought about. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And remember that I will be trying several different types of cane throughout the summer. So if you wanna make sure that you don't miss out on any of those videos, to click the subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Bye. First go down the reed on one side, then up the reed on the other side in order to create a series of X's. Now you must go deep enough that you rough up. Do you see my giraffe? He's wearing a tiara. I'm getting too excited. Slow the words down, you're talking too fast.